Fuck, man. I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's fog or fucking smoke. But I want to go up there. We're going to try to go up there. See, usually through there, through those trees, you could, uh, you see the mountain. <laughs> it does not smell like smoke, though. Fuck, dude. God damn it. Every goddamn day is like, oh my God. There's nothing to do, but there's a lot to do. I'm busy as fuck. What am I talking about? Look at what's going on here. Jesus, man. <sighs> this is from yesterday. Let's see if I can... Um, fuck, man. So, all right. Bert, what are you doing? Is that you? Jesus Christ, what are you... Hold on. What you, did you want... What, do you want to learn how to do this? Bert? Why are you up? Am I hallucinating? Do I, did I see Kreischer here? I thought he was out playing a field somewhere. Shouldn't Bert be out performing in a field? <sighs> you know, some guys, you know, you don't know. You're getting ready to go play tennis, are you? I don't know why that's funny picturing you doing anything. Um, well, I hope you're doing all right, buddy. Have a good game. <laughs> Tonight, Bert Kreischer will be playing a meadow outside of Des Moines. Hope you're okay, buddy. I'll text you later to say hi. I forget to say hi to people. Hope you and your family are doing all right. It's a tough time, but I imagine you're getting very close to the family. Everybody knows each other real well now, right, Bert? Right? Is that, does that have anything that, does that have anything to do with you? Like, I got to get out there and do some comedy in a parking lot somewhere. Is there a mall somewhere that's closed? <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan is definitely not here. So, how's it going? Let's 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 focus on me now, Mark. It's my show. It's not Bert's just here because he he must have like he must just be sitting there in bed, <laughs> wondering what the what's going on. So. uh Nice to see you. I haven't been here in a couple of days. Hey, look, folks, use whatever options you have at your disposal to maintain your sanity without hurting other people. It's too close. Is this, is this, is this good? Am I good? What's on my forehead? Is that a zit? Hey. Oh, how exciting. At my age, you, it's not really the first place you go. Like, is that a zit or is that something that's going to kill me in three months? What the fuck is that? Should we all figure it out? Mm, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you get nervous with the things on your face. I had a basal cell. Um, that was that was bad. Oof. You guys know that story, though, right? We don't need to tell the basal cell story. We don't need to tell the hole-in-your-face story today, do we? Do you need to hear the hole-in-your-face story? I actually think it's, um, it's always there. That's the other thing. It's like, yeah, that's always there. I see my face every day, many times a day. 
but then I'll just decide like, well, yeah, that's that thing that's always there that I've never noticed before. Um, it's so funny. There's many people that know the basal cell story. Oh yeah, thank you for the mice. Who just said that? I'm, I'm scrolling back. I don't know where it is. It's hard for me to keep up. Oh, Chuck Pen 3. Did you send these? These are what you sent, Chuck? I haven't opened them yet. Oh, what brand cat food was Elliot Gould looking for in the long to buy? Curry. Curry cat food. Um, thanks, Chuck. Thanks. There, some gifts are coming in, which is very nice and unexpected. And I appreciate it. Uh, Cat Power sent me the hat. It says, um, make lying wrong again. And she sent me some spices and a little fist and her record. Then Donnie sent me some heirloom blueberry powder, which I know nothing about. Do you snort it? Do you snort the blueberry powder? Is that the right way to do it? Just chop up a couple lines of this fine blueberry powder. Mark, this organic blueberry powder is 100% blueberries that are grown in the beautiful Skagit Valley, 80 miles north of Seattle. Fantastic for smoothies. But can I snort it? Can I snort the blueberry powder? Is this too close? Am I good? Am I good? Is my nose clean? Can I leave the bathroom now? Let's go, man. Got beers at the bar, but am I good? There was nothing on my nose, right? No blueberry on my nose, right? Blueberry bumps. Blueberry bumps. Um, back to Tompkins Square Park. Right. <laughs> oh my god. I remember the first couple times I tried the hard stuff. There was that, uh, where was it? What? Where was the, uh, which bar down there had a pool table? Did Sidewalk Cafe have a pool table, like downstairs? I remember one of the first. Waving goodbye to my recycling. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Was it Sidewalk Cafe that had. Uh... Don't pull on it. That had the pool table? Yeah, I remember one that one of the few times I tried the hard stuff. I went down there and met some. I actually met a MTV executive and some other people. I think Doug Benson was there for some reason. We we're playing pool, and I was just trying to keep my head up. That's an exciting high. Snort this stuff, and then try to to keep your head up for the next four hours, and don't throw up on your shoes. Um, yesterday, I put up the Barry Levinson episode. Yeah, the hard stuff, dude. Yeah, I snorted a little, a little of the white, buddy. Come on, it was New York. It's, uh, late 80s. Gotta give it a whirl. It didn't stick, thank God. I like to go fast, not the slow down. Congrats. What's the hard stuff? What do you mean? What do you think the hard stuff is? Dope. The dope. The dope. I, um... Yeah, Barry Levinson. I had a great time. I had a great time talking to that guy. Learned a lot. It was fun. It was funny. You re-listened to my Jennifer Coolidge episode. Oh, my God. That feels like a million years ago. 
I'm putting my boots on because I'm because I'm gonna go I'm gonna go hiking the shit anyways. I'm gonna destroy my lungs. No crank. That wasn't crank in New York. Crank was um and <laughs> crank. <laughs> Woohoo Yeah. Crank is a great high for an hour. It's what you do with the other seventy-four that becomes tricky. Um Wow, remember drugs? I guess some of you probably still do them. It's been a long time for me. Oh, let's let's look at more presents. I can't stay out here forever. I'm gonna me, me and Dean are gonna try and hike. Uh, this was a, a a a card with a disturbing sexually charged poem that I think better off I just keep here because it was a little, it was a little dark and it did not make me feel great. Um. This, there, someone sent a package of stuff with a record in it. It's from Michael and Larry, but they sent this, which I like. It seems to be, it seems to be a Cholo Jesus, which I think is pretty great. Just a re, a rethinking of the Jesus by M. Rutushin. I think that's how you pronounce it. Oh, and this is a couple of dudes who are probably a couple, maybe. Michael Rattushin and Larry Elefante, who sent me his record. Thank you, fellas. Cholo Jesus is definitely going somewhere. Isn't this fun? I hear there's whole YouTube channels of this. This is my future. Opening stuff. It's a nice letter. From a, from a lady who said she took care of a troll on there. My old troll. My old troll, Bert, who uh, just couldn't help himself. The, that guy has been literally listening to me since the beginning and trolling me hard through email since the beginning. And then every once in a while, he's like, hey, you know, you, I like you and you like me. Let's just leave politics out of it. That lasted about a week. <laughs> Then I had to block him. I don't give a fuck. Um, so, yeah, so that was a few presents. Oh, wait, there's more. Wait, there's more. Buddhist, Buddhist theme. Unlocking the mysteries of birth and death. I don't know who the middle way press. I think this is the numb your hose people because there's she sent a card. It's a very nice thing. Oh, it is. So the numb your hose. Did you guys see the last detail with uh, Dennis, Randy Quaid, and Jack Nicholson? The last detail. I believe it's a Hal Ashby film. Too close. Nummy ho renge kyo, 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 So this one, this is one of those gifts where it's sort of like, thank you very much, I'll look into it, and I could have an altar in my house in a month. Be very, you know, grounded and happy and have one of those things where people come over and they look over and they're like, oh, he does, okay. He's one of those guys. Not judging. It is what it is. We'll see. It's a hard time. I have a lot to read. My buddy Sam Lipsite sent me a screenplay. I got to read Sharpling's book and I also have to read some Patty Smith stuff before I talk to her. A lot of reading. I read the entire Matthew McConaughey book. Not even on purpose. This is a nice package. From Kai. Some Irish stuff, a hat. This one's Cat Lovers Against White Supremacy. Someone else sent me a mug. This is a fish of some kind. I'm not sure what it does. I don't know if it's a 
large cat toy. I have to look into it. Lacatane hair cream. Box of Irish tea. This is a very thoughtful box. I enjoy it. This is a gift card. She sent me so much stuff. Thank you, Kai, in uh, Phoenix. Shirt. Shirt. With uh, amps on it. I don't even know what's in here. Is that fish a fish toy? It moves like a dying fish. It seems so big. It's a cat toy. I don't know if you guys listened to the episode yesterday, but I talked about this dream I had about Lynn, and apparently I referred to her, you know, like when I was talking about her as my ex, which is sad because she's not my ex. She's my late girlfriend. Um, we're still together in spirit, certainly. But I have so many exes, man. And you know what? Not one of them fucking talks to me. What kind of person are you? Are you the kind of person that stays friends with your exes? Or are you the kind of person where they're like, fuck that guy? Hmm? What kind of impact did you have? Too close? Well, that was, the, that was really the saddest part, man. What was all sad obviously but um oh healing aloe hydro grow kit all right looks like a project it looks like one of those gifts that like you know when you're a kid and there's relatives that are concerned about you and they want to get you on the smart path so they give you educational presents maybe this will interest him he could grow an aloe plant <laughs> Here's a chemistry set. Um, yeah, the X is like, well, that was just like one of the sad parts is I really kind of like, you know, Lynn and I kind of had feelings, but we were involved with other people. But I was really, you know, I feel terrible about, you know, about, um, breaking up with Sarah but like it took a while to think it through because I was okay with her but part of it part of the thing that held me back was just the heartbreak of breaking up I mean I'm 50 fucking 7 I'm going to be 57 in a couple of days I mean how many of those do you have how many times can you break up where you just don't fucking smash your heart to bits because even if you want to even if you're the one doing it unless you're angry it's fucking heavy man and it's like, how many times? I understand why people fucking lock down, get into a relationship, stay married or whatever, even if they, you know, have periods. Marriages are long, you know? Most people who are married for a long time, they do something. They end up in a, you know, supply closet making out with somebody and they're like, oh no, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Or, you know, whatever. Maybe a supply closet was too um, work-related. They end up in a car with some man or woman that they work with or know from the coffee shop making out really heavy for a minute and they're like, oh no, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And they drive away. And then, uh, you know, then they just kind of tuck that in. They tuck that into the little, the weird bucket, the shame bucket in the brain. What's in the shame bucket? Is your shame bucket overflowing? But I really, like, half the reason why I almost did not end up with Lynn was because I just couldn't handle another breakup. But then it was just sort of like, if I don't do this, I'll regret it for the rest of my life. She was so pretty. Um, what shame bucket? Lucky you. God bless the people that don't have a shame bucket. 
yeah, you know, like you get your shame bucket, and then uh, Sarah is a great painter. She won't ever talk to me again. It hurts me, but what are you gonna do? I mean, what you know, I understand. Um, yeah, it, a few times in your life, you take your shame bucket out to the great river, the great cleansing river, and you just dump all the guts and garbage that's in your shame bucket into the great cleansing river. And uh, it actually goes from there and um, the algae of love eats all of the crap that was in the shame bucket and it kind of moves on to the great spiritus mundi and uh, re-enters the uh, mystical ecosystem. Where's that river? It runs through your heart. So you have to hack through the jungle that surrounds your heart. Also, if, you, if you've got some amends to make, you gotta do that too. That helps clear the way. I'm being metaphorical, but sometimes you have to just, sorry. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I didn't know at the time. I'm sorry. I was selfish, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do to just remember when you apologize to somebody. That's doesn't mean it's going to be accepted, but that's not what it's about. Yeah, it's like, you know, I don't know, man. What was I talking about the other day? I was like, You know, people who are constantly thinking that they're not right, they're not good, it ain't right. Because I was talking about my parents, right? To my friend. And um, you can't blame your parents. But you're wired a certain way. And there's no change in that. All you can do is make different choices for yourself and reroute some of that wiring a little bit bypass the box you got to bypass the um, I'm shit box in your brain through making different choices big day today seems why am I so chipper I get that I didn't I don't remember that movie but it's not your fault it, right it, it, it this therapy session is great if you're gonna be condescending about therapy you can go eat balls because therapy is not about maintaining victimhood. I mean, if you remember that, then, you know, you can get some good use out of it. But at a certain age, if you're in therapy, you kind of know why you're there. If you're just going and you don't know why you're there, maybe you shouldn't go because they might have a live one and they could keep you there for decades. You'll never get better. But if you're like, hey man, I know there's some things about myself that we're not gonna unfuck, but there's some fuck stuff that we might be able to unfuck. So let's try and unfuck this stuff. Some people use the word unpack. I don't know, therapy's tricky, because you really, you know, are you really doing it or are you just using it to, you know, is it just, do you have a confessor or do you have a practitioner? Are you just there to repeat yourself and continue behaving the way that you're critical of yourself for looking for some sort of forgiveness or validation that it's still okay and that you're still trying or are you fixing it? Have you read Russell Brand's recovery? No. Why would I read Russell Brand for anything practical? I'll read the real guys. Um, 
Here's, here's another thing I want to say if I'm going to do these occasionally. Yeah, I've been doing EMDR. I believe EMDR does work. I don't care anymore. That's not a bad place to be. Sometimes you just get old, you get tired, and you're like, fuck it. I'm, I'm this. I'm not going to do these things. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Real guys. Oh, I don't like, I don't read self-help books. And I never have. Hi, Lynn. Hummingbird. Um, Russell Brand is jealous of himself on heroin. That sounds right. I let go of that. I'm definitely not jealous of who I was on drugs. I don't know what Russell Brand is. If he's a douche or he's not a douche, I'm, you know, I'm glad he's doing okay. But you know, I'm not going to look to Russell Brand for help in any way. Just my choice. It's not a judgment. It's just my choice. Do I think I'll date again? Yes. Um, fire up the Tweed Deluxe. No, dude, that's Sundays and Wednesdays. Sundays and Wednesdays are Tweed Deluxe days, the day before the show. Last night I was playing my Blues Junior to um, some records, bought a lot of records. Got more records, dude. I got more records. Um... You used to be obsessed with heroin, figuring out what it was about. You know, if you're unfortunate enough to, to build that relationship with opiates, it's like, it's fucking, you're under it, man. I am so fucking fortunate that it was not my bag because people don't expect to be in that relationship. You know, they, they think they can get out of that relationship, but man, to get out from under the weight of that, that fucking monkey, that goddamn gorilla on your back, when you got fucking, when you're an opioid or opiate or heroin addict, it's not just a monkey on a back, on your back. It's a gorilla on your shoulders and your head is in its ass. And that's it. You just spend your life trying to see out of the eyes of the gorilla whose ass your head is in. No, cessation from cigarettes worse than heroin. People say that, but it's, I don't, it's really not. That's a myth. Kicking nicotine is hard. But you don't sweat and throw up and writhe in your fucking bed for two or three days. Almost die. You know, your skin doesn't crawl. Your skin doesn't hurt. You know, it's, it's a lie. I bet kicking methadone was hard. Yeah, I miss my dead friends too, pal. How'd I get off cigs? Nobody beats heroin. Yeah, you know, that's kind of, it's, they do, but they, they've, they've punched a hole into so, in something that, you know, it, you're constantly kind of like patching. You know, you look inside and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Did that spackle come out? What happened? You know, it's just, you know, kind of ride it out. You know, maybe some a little booze. Uh It took me forever to get off nicotine. I mean, I kicked cigarettes a decade ago, but then I was on, you know, on and off cigars. I was like on the nicotine lozenges forever. I stopped the gum because it was, you know, it was bad for my teeth, uh, the chewing. But um, it took me, I've only been off nicotine about a year and 10, you know, a year and a month. So it took me that long. I quit smoking in like 2000. I recommend, for, honestly, for cigarettes, get on those fucking lozenges, man. Get those Walgreens. I like the Walgreens cinnamon four milligrams, the big ones. Mini lozenges dissolve too quick. 
But if you get the big four milligram ones and just start with that shit and get hooked on those, you give your fucking lung a rest. Get hooked on the fucking lozenges and give your fucking lungs a rest. Do you understand me? Too close? It's all about the burning lung tissue. That's where the fucking problem is. Nicotine's not going to kill you. It's the burning lung tissue. Too close? Sorry. Any investment advice? I don't fucking know, dude. Which brand? I just told you. I, I bought the Walgreens cinnamon four milligrams. I still got some. I have a, they're all over my house, and I, I don't know why I do that. Some people are like, got to throw them away, man. Flush your shit. No, I'm going to leave all the shit around, and I'm going to see if I can transcend it. Yeah, don't burn your lung tissue. I think this is like, I'm not a doctor, and I don't know much, you know? Okay, so I feel like I might have put some people off with uh if you find hope because I, I have read a couple self-help books i just realized that i don't know if they're really they're recovery oriented but they're definitely in that world they're in that realm i read pia melody's books is that her name is it does anyone know where are my fucked up people Pia Melody, did she write a book on codependency and love addiction? Could someone check that out? Because I can't, I'm talking to you. Is it Pia Melody? Is that her name? I definitely read some self-help around codependency when I was with um, one of the ones, one of the exes. So here's what's happening with, in terms of the world. Obviously, it ain't good. I've got, I've got very sweet, nerdy friends who are like, do you want to go gun shopping? So that's where we're at culturally, is that some of the, you know, some of the nicest guys, one of the nicest guys I know, who's like just a sweet dude, appreciates the, the nuances of poetry, photography, art, and, you know, music it's like you want you think you want to hit the gun store today so that's where we're at facing love addiction it's pia melody facing love addiction right and then she's got one on um codependency which is the, is the better one love addiction's tricky to unpack but it's it's pretty good you know these are all models see that's yeah the codependency thing was helpful but um but it was all in line with recovery. So, and I imagine that's what Russell's doing on some level is sort of rewriting recovery literature and elevating himself to some sort of um, sobriety guru. So, you know, he can, you know, stand alone, be pro recovery, but also pro Russell in his enlightenment. I'm speculating. Um, Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know I was fucking codependent until that one relationship I had, and you know, and I was completely fucking blinded. I mean, you know, usually if you're an addict, you got a little bit of both. Double winner, they call us. But I never really wrapped my brain around my codependency. I know that I've been with codependents, but I never really knew my own until it just takes the one relationship where you're like, holy fuck, how did I not see where all your friends are like, we knew, we knew she was going to kill you. I'm like, I loved her, but she was going to kill you. I'm like, I don't, I, what are you talking about? Codependency is tricky, man. It is confusing as a concept. There's no doubt. Did I get to say goodbye to Lynn? Not while she was alive. I went down to the hospital and
Um, I spent a few minutes with her body. So. Anyway, first relationship with someone who was a narcissist. You know, make sure you're using that word properly because there's very few actual narcissists. There are narcissistic people, but an actual narcissist is um, a, a kind of rare thing. They're around and they're horrifying. Um, but it's like they, it's, it's like the word genius. It gets thrown around a lot for, you know, but the clinical trip, you know, is really, um, anyway, codependency, I, you know, codependency destroyed my second marriage because I was, uh, a, you know, I, it just did my, my, that wife hit a codependent bottom and, you know, couldn't take any more, rightfully so. She got me sober, I latched on, we entered a relationship, you know, from the day I got sober, I left my first wife for her. I, th I thought I loved her, I believe I did love her, but, you know, it, it, it definitely left her empty and it, but I didn't really get it then. But I think what happens with codependency is you basically get addicted to a person and you want to help them. You want to, you know, you, you just, you no longer see, you know, the nature of yourself or what's happening. You're, you're just sort of all about locking in with this other person, maintaining the bond with this person. You're addicted to a person and that's a tough thing to kick. And um, you start to realize that you no longer are seeing clearly or you're losing yourself in this other person. And then if you, if you hit a codependent bottom, you, you've lost yourself to the point where, you know, you're dropping things or you're wrecking cars or, you know, you're becoming absent-minded because yourself is being slowly erased by the, the momentum and um, actions of the person you love. So, okay, I'm probably gonna go hiking. Did I forget anyone's presence? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking do a couple lines of heirloom blueberry powder. Oh, I was talking about the world. Yeah, it's, it's horrible out there. I don't think I'm gonna buy a gun. Um, I, I think they're kind of hard. There's been a rush on guns. I grew up with guns, I'm not. I'm not weird about guns. I grew up in New Mexico. There, you know, there were just there were guns around. Um, my dad had them, but I don't know. The last couple of days have been okay, only in the sense that the the time of the times during the day where I'm like, oh, well, that's okay, and then you have that moment where you're like. Hey, I just made a nice dinner. I just watched a movie. That was good. And then you're like, oh my God, we're still, it's still happening in the world and outside. Oh my God. Like you, there's this weird switch to where you're like, I know they're shit magnets for sure. For sure. I used to do a joke about the gun. That was one of my best jokes. But, but just that moment where you're like, today was okay. And then you're like, well, what? No, it's not. There's nothing okay. Oh, my God. So there was, there's been a pretty good balance. Um, but we're fucked. It's so fucking terrible. My lung's kind of achy. Oh, the joke. What was the joke? Um, I'm not getting a gun. But, uh... Oh, uh, oh the joke was... Um, God, I fucking love that joke. My wife, it was Mishnah at the time. She's like, she want, she wants to buy a gun uh, to protect the house. Uh, and there's, there's no way, there's no way I'm getting her a gun. 
my wife because that's sort of like me saying, you know, I kind of want to kill myself, but I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> that's a good joke. I don't have massive panic attacks. I know, I have mild ones. I know when I'm having trouble with my breathing. Um, uh, I know when my lungs get tight. So I don't have full on hyperventilating things. But I know like the first place it reacts to, uh, to stress. What's your opinion on Spotify trying to be or the YouTube of audio? I don't know, man. I, you know, it's like, I'm so disconnected from all that shit. You know, I live in the world that I've kind of built for myself. I don't, you know, I'm not, I use Spotify sometimes, but not really. I don't really know what's going on in all these different factions of the industry that I'm in. I don't care. Uh, it doesn't seem to invade my world. I haven't talked to Stan Hope in a while. Why? Is he okay? Um, no, I like Spotify. It's a fine platform, but you're asking me questions about their business model. I don't give a fuck. Um, I really don't. There's a lot of things I wish I gave a fuck, uh, gave a fuck about. Uh, in those ways to occupy my brain, but I don't. See you later, garbage. Thank you. Oyster shells. Thank you for your gifts. Um, okay, what time is it? Oh, look at that, it's fucking clearing up, you guys. Hold on. Ow. Oh my god. I think I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I think the aging thing is happening. I'm starting to walk like it. Oh. How many of you guys have been here the whole time? Look, you can see the mountain back there. Do you see it back there? It's blue. Holy fuck. I'm glad I waited. The app was right. All right, I'm going to go up the hill with Dean. What, no, what's going on with my... I don't know. Like Some people have side effects from the, from the statins. You know, that have that muscle soreness, but I'm also like working out three times a week and going up the hill and I'm old, so I don't know. Uh, please use whatever options you have at your disposal to maintain your sanity without hurting other people. Too close? To all my codependents out there. I'm back. Make sure you take care of yourself, okay? And then them, okay. All right, okay. Look at the fucking troll kicking me in the ass on the way out. You're definitely old. You don't have to be cunty. Does it feel good to be that cunty? Take care, love you guys. Talk to you later.